Dear students, under the lecture series on sequencing problems, here we have a lecture 2. In our previous lecture, we learned the basic definitions and terminologies under sequencing problems. We also learned there are four types of sequencing problems, that is type 1 to type 4. Now, in this video lecture, we are going to learn the first type, that is n jobs in two machines. So, we are going to solve the first problem under this topic. So, the question is, there are five jobs, each of which we must go through the two machines A and B in the order A to B. So, first we have to complete mission A and then we have to perform mission B. Processing times in hours are given below. So, these are the jobs and processing times of mission A and mission B. Now, we have to determine the sequence for the five jobs that will minimize the total elapsed time. Also, we have to find the ideal time of mission A and mission B. The first step in solving this problem is we have to find the job sequencing. That is, we have to find the order in which the jobs has to be performed. So, here we have jobs from 1 to 5 and we have two machines, mission A and mission B. Now, these has to be figured out in, uh, in a box that indicates the order of the jobs to be performed. Now, in this, under um, the left hand side, we have to first write the first mission, that is mission A. And to the right, we have to mention mission B. So, this has to be performed in this order and mission B jobs will be performed in this order. So, that is uh, the first mission should be written on the left and the second mission should be written on the right. Now, the first step is we have to look out for the least value that is the minimum value out of all these processing times. Now, if you see, we have the values here. Out of all these values, we see that 2 is the minimum value and the job corresponding to that is 2 and the mission corresponding to this value is mission A. So, we have to write the job under mission A. So, the job 2 should be written under mission A. So, that will be the first job that has to be performed. So, after writing that, in order to uh, not consider this job again. Let us just give a small strike with the help of a pencil so that uh, we know that this job is completed. Now, after that, next we have to look out for the next least value. So, we have 10, 4, 18, 14, 6, 16, 20 and 8. Out of all the remaining values, 4 is the least value. Now, if you see the job corresponding to 4 is 1 and this is under mission B. So, job 1 has to be written under mission B. So, 1 should come here. So, after writing that, let's give a small strike for that. So, that we know it is completed. Out of the remaining values, so these are the remaining values. So, out of these values, we have to look out for the least value. So, what is the minimum value? 6 is the minimum value. And the job corresponding to 6 is 4. And it is under mission A. So, you have to write that 4 under machine A. So, this we have done. Next, after completing that, since we have finished it, we will just give a strike. Out of the remaining values, what is the least? 8 is the least value and it is for job 5. And this is under machine B. So, a, uh, 5 has to be written under machine B. So, machine B is here. So, we have to write 5. So, that is done. So, since this is done, we will just give a strike. And the only job left out is job 3 and that we have to write here because we have only one cell left out. So, this is 3. So, this is the order of the jobs in which it has to be performed. So, this is known as the job sequencing. So, after finding the job sequence, we have to find the total elapsed time for which we have to have to draw the table column. The table has to be drawn in this format where the jobs has to be written first and this column has to be filled with the sequence of jobs that we have found. In that order, we have to fill it. That is, we have found the job sequence as this. That is 2, 4, 3, 5, 1. 
so in this order we have to fill the, this column so first it will be 2 and then 4 and then 3 and then 5 and then the last job to be performed is 1 so in this order we have to write and then we have to write machine A and machine B and the corresponding that is the time in and this is the processing time of machine A given in the question and time out and then for machine B also time in processing time and time out we have to write and what is this processing time it is the time given in the question so these are the processing time now according to this job we have to write the processing time for example first we will finish machine A what is the first job 2 for 2 what is the processing time it is 2 so we have to write 2 over here next we have this one that is in uh, machine A we have to see for job 4 for job 4 the value is 6 so we have to write 6 here and for job 3 it is 18 for job 5 it is 20 and next is job 1 for 1 it is 10 so we have to write these values here in a similar manner the processing time for mission B also should be written. So for 2 it is 12. So that we have to write here. And then the next job is 4. So for 4 it is 16. And next is 3 it is 14. And after that we have 5 and the corresponding value is 8. And then we have job 1 and the corresponding processing time in machine B is 4. So that we have to write here. Yes. Once this is done, next we have to calculate the time in and time out. And always remember the time in for the first machine for the first job is always 0. So what is the first job to be performed? It is 2. So when this enters the machine A, the calculated time is 0. First it is 0 because initially when we start a job it will start from time 0. And then for how many how, how many hours it is being processed in mission A for 2 hours. So just add it. So 0 plus 2 is you have to add it. Okay. So 0 plus 2 is 2. So that you have to write here. So after that now the time out for job 2 is 2. Now job 4 will enter the machine at the time out of job 2. What is the time out 2 here? So 4 will enter at 2 hours. So that 2 we have to write here. So just remember this value should be written here. And then you add this 2 with the processing time. So that will, that will be 2 plus 6 is 8. So job 3 will enter at this value. So 8. So 8 plus 18. That is 26. So, job uh, time out for job 3 is 26. So, job 5 will enter at this time. So, 26 you write here. Then 26 plus 20 because the processing time is 20. So, 26 plus 20 will be 46. And then job 1 enters at this time. So, that is 46. It works for 10 hours. So, 46 plus 10 is 56. So, we have completed for mission A. Next for machine B. What will be the time in for machine B? It will be the time out of job 2. That is job 2 is completed in machine A at, uh, for 2 hours and then it enters in machine B. So when it enters this will be 2 over here. Now 2 plus the processing time. So 2 plus 12 you have to do which is 14. Now you have to check whether 14 is greater or 8 is greater. So out of these two values which is the highest value 14. So job 4 will enter machine B at 14 hours. So you have to write that here. Then 14 plus 16 you have to do which will be 30. So 30 you get here. Now you must check whether 30 is greater or this 26 is greater. Which is greater out of these two 30 is the greatest. So that has to be written here. So 30. Now 30 plus 14 that will be 44. Now again you have to check whether 44 is greater 
of 46 is greater which is greater 46 is greater so that has to be written here so whichever is the maximum that has to be written so 46 plus 8 which will be 54 now 50 whether we have to check whether 54 is greater or 56 is greater which is greater 56 so that has to be written here so 56 so 56 plus 4 is 60 so this will give us the total elapsed time so remember this is the total elapsed time so i am writing in short t e t so this is the total elapsed time for this problem so we shall take and write that total elapsed time is equals 60 hours because it is given in hours in the question so remember to write the units next in the question it is also asked that we have to find the ideal time for mission a and mission b that is the time that mission a and mission b uh, remains without any job so first we will write the ideal time for mission a the formula for ideal time for mission a is equals total elapsed time minus processing time of mission a so if you see these are the processing times time of mission a so we have to add all this processing time so if we add what do we get so it will be 2 plus 6 plus 18 plus 20 plus 10 which we get it as 56 so this is the total processing time for mission a and similarly we will add and keep this also 12 plus 16 plus 14 plus 8 plus 4 and what is the total processing time here 54 we get so when we add all this we get 54 so we will add and keep now this is the processing time for machine a so idle time for machine a is equals total elapsed time minus processing time for machine a so that is equal to total elapsed time is 60 hours so 60 minus the processing time of machine a is 56 so if you are 60 minus 56 which is equal to 4 hours so therefore the machine a remains ideal for 4 hours in a similar way we have to calculate the idle time for machine b and that will be equal to total elapsed time minus processing time of machine b so that is equal to what is the total elapsed time it is 60 hours minus total processing time of machine b we have calculated here and it is 54 so these are the two values so 60 minus 54 and that is equal to 6 hours so therefore machine a remains idle for 4 hours and machine b remains idle for 6 hours and the total time taken to complete all the jobs in the in the two given machines is 60 hours which is the total elapsed time with this we are done with the problem so first step is we have to find the job sequence and the next step will be we have to form the table of form where we have to write the sequence of jobs that we have found in that order and after writing that we have to write the time in processing time and time out for machine A and similarly for machine B and we have to calculate the time in and time out and finally we get the total elapsed time and with the help of uh, the total processing times by subtracting it from total elapsed time we get the ideal time for this uh, uh, jobs so i hope you would have understood this problem kindly follow the next video lecture for slightly different problem on this topic where the processing times will be repeated more than one so kindly follow the upcoming video lecture thank you